Hey y'all, Organizing Hire, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, I generally talk about organization and productivity tips, tools, and resources, and emphasize how I am using the GTD methodology with tools like Outlook and Todoist and Obsidian to get things done. Last year, I did a video on my email folder setup and how I apply the GTD methodology to my email. The way that I use my email now has changed a little bit, and so I wanted to provide an updated version of that. So if you are using the GTD method with your email and want to get an idea of a way that you could possibly set it up in Outlook specifically, then definitely keep watching. So a couple things I should say about this folder setup up front. Uh, first, two things. Uh, the first thing is that my email, uh, like the amount of emails that I get, is arguably significantly lower than probably most people. I probably get about 50 emails every single day, which is not a ton. In my previous job, it wouldn't be unusual for me to get maybe 200 in a day, particularly very, during the first like two to four weeks of the semester. So definitely a, a huge shift in the number of emails that I get. That said, the process that I use with the emails is exactly the same, and it works for me whether I get two emails a day in my inbox or 200 in my inbox. The second is that when I'm working from my inbox, the things that land in my inbox are only the things that I don't have filters on. I have filters on a lot of my emails. I have a filter that filters out um, any kinds of like newsletters that I'll get. There's a weekly bulletin like newsletter that our campus sends out that gets filtered out. That stuff doesn't even land in my inbox. Any kind of auto replies, like if someone's out of the office, that stuff doesn't land in my inbox. So the inbox is really, really all the stuff that doesn't pass those other like gatekeepers. So if you have emails that you get like regularly where you either get them from the same people or especially newsletters, like, oh my gosh, newsletters, just weed those out of the inbox. I actually put those in a different folder, which I'll talk about a little bit later in this video, but you don't want that stuff to land in your inbox. So the stuff that lands in my inbox pretty much is stuff that I have to make a decision on. So once things are captured, that's step one of GTD, once things are captured in that inbox, the second step is to clarify what it is. So I go through and I kind of decide, well, what is this thing and what do I need to do about it? So usually one of two things happens with the email. Um, I either don't really need to do anything about it and then I archive it, or I need to maybe file it for um, future reference, um, or I need to pull out some information from it and then file it, um, file it, or pull out some information and then archive it. So from my inbox, the emails could go to my archive if I just archive it right away or it could go to one of my project support folders. And again, I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. So after the inbox, the rest of my email folder setup basically is a way to um, kind of organize the emails once they're no longer in my inbox. So one of the main folders that I use for email processing when I'm actually like in my email and I need to do email things, that's not clearing out my inbox, but I'm like, doing email or whatever, um, is my action folder. So I have a folder called action. It used to be maybe like back, back, back in the day with Outlook that the folders would um, automatically be alphabetized. And so you would have to tag a folder with like a number or with a letter for it to go to the top of the, the list of folders. But now you can just drag and drop folders wherever you want them to go. So uh, you don't have to put the little at sign in front of it or an asterisk or a number, you can just put the word action. So that's one thing that's a little bit different from my setup from a year ago is I used to have the numbers in front of the folders. Now it's just the name of the folder. I do make them capitalized just so they stand out and that's more just for my visual. So the action folder is where I put things where I actually need to do something and I actually need the email in order to do that thing. Now I would say eight to maybe even nine times out of 10, when I get an email, I don't need the actual email in order to do whatever the thing the email is asking me to do. So for example, if someone emails me and says, you know, hey, Christina, can you email me the PowerPoint for that presentation that you just did last week? 
I don't need the actual email in order to email them the PowerPoint presentation. Now, maybe that's not the best example because that particular task would take me less than two minutes to do. So I'd probably just right away reply back and send them the PowerPoint and then send it off. So because it would take less than two minutes, I wouldn't even bother filing it away. But let's say it's something that's gonna take a little bit longer than two minutes. You know, hey, Christina, can you send me um, a draft of the presentation that you're gonna be coming up with, you know, once it's ready? Now, I don't actually need the email in order to do that. So I would put the task of, you know, work on the PowerPoint presentation, I would put that task into Todoist, but the actual email, I would probably just archive. Now, if it's an ongoing project and it's something that I'm gonna be working on, you know, and I might need to reference that particular email or there's a, an email thread or something like that, that I think is somehow going to be helpful or necessary for me as I'm working through like create you and working on that project or that task, then I might keep the email and put it into one of my project support folders. I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail a little bit later. But other than that, I don't actually need that email to complete the task. And that per that that habit of kind of gauging, do I actually need this email in order to complete this task? Or can I pull out the task and like get rid of the email? That habit saves me so much time and part of why i'm able to get to inbox zero so quickly and so like uh, efficiently and regularly is because i don't keep emails like that in my inbox once i don't need the email at all for any reason i just archive it i pull out the task i put it in my task manager and then i've captured that reminder to do that task so these days the action folder is usually empty, like there's usually nothing in here because it's so rare that I have tasks where I actually need to reference the email in order to do the task. But if I did have an email that I got and I have to have that email, to be able to do that task for whatever reason. I can't even think of an example off the top of my head because it happens so infrequently. But you know, if you feel like I have to have this email in order to do this thing, um, oh, here's a perfect example. So if someone sends me, um, you know, hey, Christina, can you look at these um, proofs for a, um, a brochure, you know, and review the ones and, you know, give me feedback on your favorite ones. Like, great, I need the actual email in order to do that. Now I could pull out, you know, oh, I could pull out the PDFs and save those in a file, like, but that's kind of doing a lot. So I could just take the email, put that in the action folder. That way, when I get to that task of, you know, review the proofs for the brochure, that I can go back to that email in my action folder and complete that task. So hopefully that makes sense. Let me know in the comments if you have need clarif clarification on any of that. The next folder is my read review folder. The read review folder is stuff that I need to read or stuff that I need to review. That's pretty much it. So if I need to um, newsletters, all my newsletters end up here. If this is a weekly briefing from campus, if this these are newsletters that I've signed up with for um, from you know higher ed jobs or whatever, all of that stuff where I literally, like if I don't read this, things will be fine. I don't want that stuff cluttering up my inbox. There aren't any tasks necessarily associated with it. If I go to my read review and you know they're mostly newsletters and I end up like deleting things or archiving stuff and not actually opening it, things are fine. I also put stuff here like work stuff. So actually the example I just gave about my action folder that actually I might put in the action folder, but I might put it in the review folder. Kind of depends on how involved the review of the brochure would be. But if it's something I live just, you know, hey, can you proofread this? Like I would put that in the read review folder. Like I just, when I, maybe my brain energy is low or someone just wants me to look through something really quickly, all of that stuff goes in that folder. The read review folder, I usually clear out in the morning because I have some newsletters, uh, again, that filter here automatically and they usually come into my inbox at like five o'clock in the morning. So in the morning when I come in to work at usually like eight, maybe 8.30 sometimes, I will just kind of clear those things out. Sometimes I look at the newsletters, sometimes I don't. Fortunately, they'll put like, um, if there's headings, especially if it's a newsletter from like inside of higher ed, they'll put they'll have headings, so you're able to see what the, the various stories are just in the subject line. So without even opening the email, I can gauge like 
okay, is this something interesting to me or not interesting to me? And a lot of times I just end up archiving that stuff. The waiting for folder, that's the same. So the waiting for folder is any emails where I'm waiting on some kind of a response back from someone. This one's pretty simple. I very rarely add emails manually to this folder. I have a rule set up where anytime I am BCC'd or essentially not in the two line of an email, then it automatically goes into my waiting for folder. So when I send an email, if I think to myself, okay, I need to get a response back from this person, I will email the person and put them in the to line and then I'll put myself in that BCC line. And then when I hit send on that email, it will send that email to that person, but it'll also automatically send it to me, but it will skip my inbox and it will go straight to this waiting for folder. So anytime I am, you know, have low low um, work to do and I'm you know thinking about okay what do I need to follow up on I'm able to look at my waiting for folder and remind myself what are the things that I'm waiting for from people um, it's also awesome too because then I can see you know the last email that I sent and if I haven't heard back from them I just hit reply all email them again hey just following up on this it's got my initial message at the bottom I BCC myself again so that goes back into my email inbox. So I kind of like have a paper trail of all of the communications that I've had with someone. Um, and it also helps me to remember what I'm waiting for because it's literally in my email to them. I review this folder at least once a week um, during my weekly review, but I usually review it daily, honestly, when I'm checking my emails just to get an idea of things that I'm waiting for. In this view, there's a couple things that I do to help me with the waiting for folder. Um, the first is you'll see this little number next to the folder name itself. And that actually tells me the number of items that are in this folder. So you're able to see, you know, if it's three things, if it's 25 things, I'm able to see how many things I'm waiting for. Now this includes each individual email. So sometimes that, that can be tricky to just kind of internalize and understand that. So even if it's, you know, if it's eight different emails, but they're all about the exact same topic, then it's going to show up as eight different emails instead of just one, if that makes sense. So it's going to, it's going to have each individual email as an, an item. Um, in this number count. But it also helps me to know, you know, if, if I'm scanning through my in my email and I don't see a number next to this waiting for folder, then I know that I'm not waiting on anything and I could just skip over it. And the last folder is really a type of folder. It's actually multiple folders, um, which is specifically my project support folders. So anytime I'm working on a project, which for GTD speak is a uh, long-term task, it could be short-term, but usually for me it's long-term, a uh, longer-term task that's gonna take more than two actions um, that can be completed within the next year. Anytime I'm working on a project, I create a folder for that project, particularly if the project's gonna be email heavy. I'll create a folder for that project. So any emails that I get that are associated with that project, I could just drag them into that project support folder. Now the difference between project support folders and just general like subject folders, because I get this question a lot, right? Like if I'm working on a project of um, you know, let's keep with this PowerPoint thing, like, oh, PowerPoint slide, you know, why would you, why would you file it? What's the difference between filing in a project called, you know, present to um, the RAs versus, you know, the presentations folder? Like, what's the difference? The main difference for me is speed because in the fall semester, perfect example, I am constantly giving presentations. And so if I had one folder called presentations, that is going to be really difficult for me to find exactly what I'm looking for, which isn't general presentations. I am literally looking for the email that this person sent me with the details about the RA presentation very specifically. So having folders for specific projects that I'm working on just saves me so much time. The other thing, um, one of the one of my um, roles involves me to keep a lot of uh, notes and like I have to retain all of these notes and emails that I send back and forth. So the other thing that I like about this particular um, method is after that project is complete, I'm able to literally just drag all of those emails from that project folder, that project support folder, drag it into our shared network, and all of those emails move over instantly. If I wasn't doing that, if I had it in like a general, you know, hearings folder, I would have to 
look for, okay, which ones are, you know, related to this particular hearing, you know, which ones did I have to send, which ones are, you know, it just, it would take so much more time. So I do the work up front and I say, these are all related to this particular project. The other thing that I do with the project support folders, um, two things that are important that I find for me. Number one is I always have the project title match the project title in every other space. So in Todoist, the project, the project name is the same as it is in Outlook in this folder. It's also the same in Obsidian. If, I'm, if I have a, um, files associated in Obsidian with it, it's also the name this, called the same thing in um, like on our shared drive or any kind of digital storage system. And again, that's for speed. If I'm looking for the RA presentation or you know presenting to the RAs, I want to be able to look at every single spot and not have to stop and think, okay, what did I call it here? What did I call it here? So it's all the same and all really seamless. And when you're working with a huge number of emails, sometimes like that kind of speed and saving time just is so like, when you have so many emails, sometimes that can be a huge time saver, you know, one to two seconds that you're saving every single time you have to do that. That could be minutes or hours over the course of a week. So, um, so I definitely like doing that. And then of course I have my project support folders alphabetized because that just makes it easier for me to find something as well. As part of my weekly review, I also check my project support folders here when I'm checking my email because sometimes I will realize that a project has actually been complete. And so once the project is complete, I generally just archive all of the emails that are in that project support folder and then I delete the project support uh, folder. So one of the folders I used to have that I don't have anymore is the incubate folder. Uh, the incubate folder used to be essentially almost like a tickler file in a way. It was things that, you know, at some point I want to make a decision on this, um, but I'm not quite sure. I'm not ready to do it right now. So this isn't, um, this isn't like, uh, you know, oh, this person's asking me to send a draft of a PowerPoint and I don't feel like working on it right now. So let me put that in incubate. This is like, there's a conference coming up in October. Um, I'm not really sure if I can go to it. Let me, you know, check the budget. Let me in my next one-on-one -on -one with my boss, I will decide then if I want to go to this conference. So that's the kind of stuff that would end up in incubate. But I pretty much in make maybe the last year and a half, just never put anything in this folder. And so for B, that was a sign that it was really no longer serving a purpose for me. So I no longer had that incubate folder. So that's it for my email folder setup and how I'm using Outlook to set it up with my GTD method. Um, this could work for pretty much any kind of email client. So in Google, you could do something similar. Um, I feel like Google and Outlook are pretty much the email clients that folks use. But if you, you know, maybe someone's using Lotus Notes or something like that out there, anything that's got a folder type system, you could basically do this same thing. This works well for me and it's loosely based on um, what's, per, what's recommended in the GTD method as well. So let me know if you have questions. Sometimes when I um, talk about topics like this, I can end up being like a little bit rambly or sometimes stuff isn't always super clear. So if you have questions, let me know. If you need clarification on something, let me know. If your setup is different, let me know if it's the same. Uh, maybe you've tried this out and it works or you've had something kind of stick or you, you've you tried something else that's worked well for you. Definitely share in the comments below. It might help out someone else who's also trying to set up their email system. Thanks so much for watching and have a great week.